Welcome back to the Audio Lag Show. My first guest I usually have on the phone. This is great. He's in studio. One of our favorite guests. Good guy. Film critic. Uh, writer. Written a lot of great books. Uh, particular book guy I enjoyed. Socks in the City. After the White Sox won in 05 in Chicago. People forget about the White Sox in Chicago. Yet they're winning. Yeah, you know, They won a World Series in the last millennium. Yeah, right. Uh, Richard Roper is with us. What's up? Thanks, Hardy. How Please. you doing? I see your whole team here. I thought most of these guys were behind bars, <laughs> and they got like an hour to come out of the <laughs> clink and talk to you. They're actually all here with you. This, this is a work furlough program. What a setup you guys Including got me, I'm work furlough. No, this, this is, is, awesome. is uh, this is DirecTV took care of me. I, there's not one complaint. I mean, this is a 7,000-foot square foot loft in Soho, New York. It's like a dream. I've never been... I mean, I've technically been in show business on and off for 20 years, uh, technically, and I've never been in a studio this cool. It's I, amazing. It looks yeah. like the kind of place Ryan Philippi, like in the movies, <laughs> takes the chick, yeah. you know, after every just met her in the bar, and all of a sudden, she's got her shirt off before he does. This yeah. show's been on now, uh, in this, uh, on, we're coming up on our second year anniversary, but it's been on TV here for a year now, yeah. over a year. If Ryan Philippi hosted the show or worked here in some capacity, he'd be 3,000 chicks deep. Already banging them somewhere, like yeah, in, in, in that phone amazing. booth. Or so, you know, yeah. uh, myself, uh, I'm zero. The only, the only <laughs> odd thing I find in the entire place is that you've got a Notting Hill poster way well, in the corner over there. Is that, that's, that's that the show the sensitive side. Well, that's here? because uh, Dan Filato. We all were uh, talking yeah, on the air yeah. about our favorite movies, and Dan, okay, you know, said that in his top ten. Now you'll appreciate this. Yeah. In his top ten is The Godfather, Goodfellas, and also Notting Hill. I mean, how is that possible? Like, Dan, try to explain to Richard Roper how that's possible. <laughs> Again, I mean, because everyone sees that poster, and it's like a wart on the wall. I know Dan very well. He's lying, and we know why he's <laughs> yeah, lying yeah. about that. It's just know? about a girl that broke his heart or yeah. something, or like some romantic notion. It's the same thing where he's like, oh, is that Maroon 5 on my iPod? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm a little more sensitive than I that's wanted to I let mean. on, it's honey. Like, so, like, uh, it's, you know, and then we put it up there as a joke at first, but now the joke is almost like it is embarrassing. Then what is the story? Do you want to even say it real quick again? I got the script ahead of time. As Richard knows, my roommate, Mark Grace, dated Lauren Holly. They offered her the role. She turned it down to stay with Mark. I begged her not to. And then that movie catapulted Julia Roberts' career. So that's why it's special to you? It yeah, catapulted and there's a... her career? Sure. <laughs> I, mean, she I thought only that done was like Pretty per, Woman. She only done, like, Pretty Woman, like, yeah. eight years before Wasn't that. Wasn't that the know? movie that brought her, her back? But didn't her career uh, catapult her career yes. before that? <laughs> well, she was. <laughs> she had done a bunch of bombs, actress. like Sleeping with the Enemy and a, some real, you know, stinkos, well, and then... This was know. her comeback vehicle. Exactly. I don't have her filmography on. But, <laughs> but still, yet, why does it mean anything to you, though? It's just the point. Everything that was going on at that time, it just, it's one of my favorite It was stories. a heady time for all of those <laughs> Hollywood moguls. Yeah. Hugh Grant, Filato. You remember that time. You remember that time, Richard in Chicago, when Notting Hill came out. Everybody was talking. It was a golden age for Dan advising starlets on what role they should take. That was right around the time he said to Sandra Bullock, definitely do Miss Congeniality. He was was advising them all. (laughs) Yeah, he, uh, right. Uh, Everyone Mark Grace dated, he gave advice to. And it all worked out. Brilliantly for all of them. Cammy Diaz, you got to do Vanilla Sky. It's a supporting <laughs> role, but it's better side of you than anyone's ever seen. Remember yeah, that story? That, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. That's why we don't have Vanilla Sky up here anywhere. <laughs> but yeah, so there, Richard, there's your explanation. Right, uh, aren't you much clearer on it now? I wish I had never seen that poster. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, me too. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, so that's our uh, that's our Notting Hill thing. All right. Uh, what do you think about um, one thing in particular I want to ask you about? Uh, uh, Gandolfini in this Enough said, yeah. is it hyped up because he's dead? Or uh, is it really a movie that's worth seeing? Is, he see, I see yeah. the, the the commercials are very uh, touching. Actually, well, like, that's the thing we're talking about Notting Hill, and you know, enough said. It's not the kind of role you think of James Gandolfini. Right. He always played either a mobster or a hitman or a military figure. He played some one sort of, the of you know the darkest guy that, guys ever in that True Romance. He beats up. I never saw right. a woman get beat up like that. In yeah, the scene with Alabama, like, yeah, and, yeah. and you know, even in, even in something like Zero Dark Thirty, he's the guy that's the the boss of all bosses. Right. You know, so he's playing a regular guy here. Right, you know, right. which is kind of cool because it reminds you of what a good actor he is. That he's not just a wasn't just a one note guy. He actually plays a guy. His job in Enough Said, he plays a guy who's the curator of the television library, like where people <laughs> go in to watch old. <laughs> episodes of your show of shows oh, or wow. whatever like that he's a tv nerd so he's a real yeah. like oh, like a, a small man a little bit of a like, sad yeah, yeah. sack you know mm-hmm. divorced dad you know loves his daughter his ex-wife's always pining you know talking about what a jerk he was and everything and he meets 
Julia Louis Dreyfus, and wow. she's like, you know, she's flat out at the start just saying, well, I could be attracted to him under the <laughs> kind of yeah. sorta. And then they, you know, it's that There's, rarest of things in Hollywood. It's like a love affair between two regular middle aged people. It's a really well written movie, and he's really good in it. But it's against, you know, not what you would expect to see James Gandolfini that, do. Um, that that uh, debate in a woman's head you're talking about, I could kind of be trying. That's I count on that for me. <laughs> Having any shot, like I could kind of, I guess, if I, you know, under the right chemicals. But they, no, meet, looks... they meet at a party, and she, you know, like, they're, they're nice to meet you. And she goes, I can honestly say I'm not attracted to one man at this party. And he goes, I'm standing right here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. You know, it's funny. Uh, uh, Alexander Payne, when they, he did about Schmidt with uh, with Jack Nicholson, I right. saw him get interviewed, and he said that uh, I said to Nicholson, "You need to play. I need you to play a small man in this, like a, literally an insurance uh, adjuster or whatever in from Omaha." And, uh, like, whose big deal when he retires is getting a trailer. You know, right. A guy in a windbreaker. Yeah, you know, yeah, Not exactly. Jack Nicholson. Yeah, you know? and uh, I like when, you know, actors do that uh, when it works out, you know. So, That's a uh, tough thing for someone who's larger than life. Right, right. You know, right. who's got that persona to do that. And a lot of actors, they become such huge movie stars, they just can't pull that off. But, uh -huh. you know, so in a way, even though it's not what we expect from James Gandolfini, it's kind of, you know, a tribute to his talents that this is one of his last roles. Right. I think he's still got one or two other ones that are going to Yeah, no, really. So he did a bunch of movies before he... Yeah. Because uh, he, for a while, wasn't doing anything. But I guess... And it, that makes it even sadder. It yeah. seems like he was really getting back to start working again. You right, know? exactly. And I think he wasn't doing stuff for a while there by choice. Oh, right, just, that's you know, what I, I mean. Think he just wanted to spend time with I'm his sure. son and, you know, and, you know, kind of let things cool from The Sopranos. And also it's a smart move as an actor to say, let's have a little distance between this role that everybody's going to identify me well, with. Well, I'm glad his last one was in that magician movie with uh, with Steve Carell and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and Buscemi. I mean, I never saw more a group of more talented people make something... I mean, that was really, it just didn't work for me on any level. That, yeah, I mean, even the casting of that was weird. And Jim Carrey was playing the up-and-coming young magician yeah. who was bumping Steve Carell's old-school magic right. aside. I think they got three months difference in age <laughs> well, in real life. You yeah, know? I mean, you're <laughs> right, exactly. And, and, uh, uh, yeah, Buscemi and, and, and Steve Carell are supposed yeah. to be, like, high, kids in high school together. <laughs> they grew up together, and I go, like, was one of them in the Big Brother program? Well, this doesn't make any sense, right? Right, yeah. and then when you cut to them as adults, one looks like their father. <laughs> you're not even older. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I saw that and I thought to myself, God, is this is, is this Gandolfini's goodbye? So I'm glad. Thank God. It. That reminds me of, and this talk about one of the worst movies in recent memory, the Green Lantern movie, because they're making a movie out of every superhero right, right now. The yeah. one so with get uh, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, Reynolds, yeah. And then Blake Lively, who's, you know, like, what, 21 yeah. years old? And the story, and then Peter Sarsgaard is like the guy that goes evil. You know, there's always the one friend. And they all supposedly went to high school together. And I'm like, <laughs> it's like a Russian nesting doll here. There's no way Blake Lively and Peter Sarsgaard went to high school together. He would have been her chemistry teacher. There, it makes no sense in any planet. <laughs> not, like, not we we, we're, we're not the same as we were in school. Well, she was in school three years ago. You right. were in school during the first, you know, Reagan administration. What are we talking any, about here? Make any Who, sense. Didn't, didn't anybody think about that when they were casting Sarsgaard and Lively as High school class. Uh, we got we got to take a break, but I want to come back. I want to talk a little bit more about uh, my buddy was in the movie The Family with De Niro. I want to ask you about De Niro's career in a real serious sure. way about like uh, like where you think it stands and everything. Because um, uh, I have a, I have some definite opinions on that. But uh, what you thought of that movie and uh, a couple other things. I know you just got the job officially now. The the, the Ebert job is that like an official thing? Or? Yeah, I mean it was. I, I know, I've been writing the reviews no sometimes for a I long mean, time. Yeah, right. yeah, so but I mean. You know, yeah, I guess officially I'm the film critic. I'm sure. You know? Although right. I, I told him that's a title that should retire, like number yeah, 42. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, just nobody else take that uniform. Right. Anymore, I want to ask you a little bit more about, sure. about him Absolutely. and stuff like that. And then we're happy to have you here live, Thanks. Richard Roper, when we come back. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on audience, only on DirecTV.